Carol Vorderman, <laughs> what makes you look so fit? <laughs> I think I lost a lot of weight about six or seven years ago. And, and I think, do you know what? In my 30s, my overriding memory of um, being in my 30s is that I was tired all the time because I had kids, young children, and you're thinking, oh, God, and I've got this career and I've got to run this and I've got to look after my mother and I've got to do all of this. Whereas now in my 40s, it's sort of, hey, bring it on, you know, hey, I'm <laughs> cool about this. And you think, well, I don't, I don't feel as though I'm, I, I'm not driven in any ambitious way anymore. And, you know, there's the people I want to see. And if I have a 12 hour lunch, marvellous, you know, all of that kind of thing. And the people that I'm not particularly keen on, I don't bother with anymore. Whereas in your 20s, you have to go through all that nightclubbing thing, the cattle market routine, you know, and I never really liked that. I did it, but I was never really into it. So, no, very happy. How very can you happy. help me then? Because I am a fatty and I need to lose yeah, weight. not. <laughs> but I mean, I need to lose a few pounds. Detox really is the thing. Oh, but really, do I do have to eat what cabbage do you eat for nine then? What weeks? do you like eating? Are you sweet things? Well, I've been doing this show a few weeks so I'm staying in a hotel so that's not good oh, for that's a start. not good the mini bar mini bar full English oh. breakfast oh two of the worst things you know Susie Dent who's on countdown yes. does dictionaries yeah. we stay at the same hotel in Leeds and we've got into this terrible habit we go we just have one glass darling so we finish <laughs> at half past nine and then there's about six of us from countdown and go and then and then you start pit nibbling and nibbling and nibbling and have another glass and then another <laughs> bottle and then another bottle because so you really shouldn't be doing it oh <laughs> goodness me now let's have another and then I, I woke up one morning I'd gone I'd raided the minibar I was drunk <laughs> and I'd had and I woke up of course makeup all over the pillow surrounded you know those celebrations chocolates yes everyone unwrapped and eaten with these wrappers all over the bed clothes and a little mini Mars bar stuck to my right thigh and I thought oh god <laughs> well the worst one is when you go in these posh hotels and you sleep on the pillow and you lay on the mint that they put under your oh, yeah. pillow and you wake up and that's all over the bed that's the worst one <laughs> so help me with this and I mean if you drink a mini bar in a hotel I know you're a rich lady we're going to talk about that in a minute but that's got to be at least 300 quid hasn't it Oh, it has, and that's only the water. <laughs> Goodness me, it's a lot. So I, I pity you for that. Uh, so that's the problem, you see, hotel. And then, yeah. of course, coming in to do people like you now. Yeah. And then you I've need got... to get onto the old sushi bars, you see. Oh, I can't. I don't... take all those takeaways back to your room. The only thing I like out of water is a boiled egg. i got to tell you, I don't want anything <laughs> the fishy. Like fish. No, it's Why? the smell and the look of it and the texture. Oh, and... Mm. I can do tuna, tuna or salmon I can do. Tuna or salmon, nice tins. Mm. <laughs> you can tell I'm a classy boy. <laughs> so this detox thing that yeah. you're so fond of, I mean, does this mean I literally just have to eat cabbage for four months? Uh, yes. Right. <laughs> I think <laughs> no, I'll stick to being a fatty, no, no, I think. No, no, no. It's to, you avoid, you basically avoid wheat and dairy um, and meat, really. Those are the three key things. What's left? So you eat loads <laughs> of things that are left. So you have lots of kind of brown rice and you have loads of vegetables and like roasted, or kind of Mediterranean foods, really. So you'd have lots of uh, roasted veg with garlic and all sorts of different things. And you'd have curries, but there'd be vegetable curries and you'd have big brown rice. You actually eat an awful lot of food, um, but it's just slightly different, but they don't supply it in hotels. No, so and you can't make it in a kettle, can you? <laughs> Not very well. <laughs> but you can get miso soup, Japanese soup, you see. That's very low in calories, dried, and, then, and that's really nice. My eyes are glazing over now, <laughs> Carol. But, right, let's go through a few things because we're running short of time go already. On. We've got a ton to get to. Your career. I've never seen, really, anybody actively <laughs> slagging you off in the press. Have People you? seem to like you, don't they? How really? have you managed that over so many years? Oh, uh, threatening them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't or know whether... bribes. <laughs> or sleeping with them. <laughs> oh, Yes, I do live with someone who used to be an editor of a national newspaper. Ah, you see, people in blazers. <laughs> no, it's not that. I, I, I do get slagged off a lot. I, I mean, I used to get slagged off all the time. I mean, for uh, what a war. Mm. Um, and there was one time about five years ago that if you went onto Google and you typed in mutton dressed as lamb, <laughs> my, I beat Donatella Versace <laughs> on him, you know. 
<laughs> well, there's a claim to fame. How personally do you take that? Because, I mean, you're a lady who really is above it all now. I mean, you're successful. You've got nothing to prove. If somebody was to say something, or yeah. I was to slag you off now, yeah. would it really bother you or just think, well, that's your loss. You're a guy doing a radio well, show no, and I'm I on the TV. No, to be honest, I have been slagged off. For, so as, as most people in the public eye have been at some point or other. But you just, it's water off a duck's back. It's only very occasionally when somebody makes it, if it's something about what you wear, I mean, who cares, really? But if it's something about my family, then I get, then I'm really uh, quite hurt mm. or revengeful. <laughs> I mean, I do get it, though, because cause everybody does, to be honest. And I just think, when you do get it, you think, it's me this week, somebody else yeah. next week. You know? I can't take it to heart because mm. um, I'm very lucky. And, I know, and, you know, having done Countdown for 23 years, how lucky am I? First job I ever had. I'm still doing it. Yeah. And it's unheard of. It is unheard of. What a fickle industry we all mm. work in. You know, I mean, now 23 years. weeks is a miracle in TV, <laughs> isn't it? Let yes. alone 23 years. I know. It's like on television, um, they say, right, we're commissioning this series, you know, and usually if it's primetime series, it's like, it's a series and we're giving you six shows. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Big contract. Countdown is always booked for, right, how many? So, then there's, so that's uh, Countdown. And the last two contracts have been like this so how many shows am I signing up for that's 1,250 <laughs> programmes and that's no joke you know, that's the, that is the contract you go I'm signing to how many 1,200 <laughs> Marvellous. I think of a nicer way to live my life. <laughs> how much rubbish do you turn down every day? Because you must get offered every reality show, yeah. every crap cable show. <laughs> you must be offered so much rubbish. I mean, do you literally have a pile at the day where you just throw on the floor? Yeah, it's sifted out. I have um, one of my best friends. He is now, is, has been my agent manager, whatever. He's just a friend, really. Um, for 18 years now, John. And John uh, works and lives out of Bristol. And um, he, he, I'm doing some commuting to the office. He works at home. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and uh, it's really odd because I talk to John for about three hours a day. It drives everyone nuts. But we talk, we talk about everything. We don't talk about work, but he sifts everything out for me. That's what happens, yeah. So I don't see most of it. <laughs> there was a point a few years back where you seemed to be on everything. I was, I, I think. I did the joke on air. You know, three funny things happened to me today. I got laid. Uh, a, a politician <laughs> answered my first question and I saw a programme that Carol Vaudman wasn't, wasn't on. Wasn't on. I know, it and, was a bit ridiculous. And that kind of was the running joke for a while. Yes, now, did you back off deliberately from that or did you just think, you know what, I'll take the money why it comes because this business doesn't always last you see no. people who are huge Del Winton springs to mind yeah. who two years ago was on everything and now he's just doing the lottery show yes he's very happy so I saw him the other night and he said um, oh darling I'm just doing two series doing lottery and celebrity fit fat yeah you'll have to do it a bit more camp and slightly higher voice <laughs> <laughs> I can't do a good deal but um, but I well what happened was um I was doing everything because I did think, I mean, I was being paid an awful lot of money and you'd have been stupid not to have accepted the work. You'd have accepted Absolutely. it. Absolutely. I'm yeah. a complete whore. If you want to pay me now, <laughs> I'll do anything for you. I fully admit this. I could be fired in two minutes. So, so I was whoring around for some time, <laughs> uh, <laughs> accepting anything. Um, and I did that. And then I was shattered. I was absolutely exhausted. And I wasn't seeing my children enough uh, as I wanted to. So it was partly that, but also partly I wasn't being offered quite as many of the primetime shows. Um, and then the kind of things that I used to do that I liked aren't being commissioned now. It tend to be a lot of reality shows on now. As you know, there aren't many presenter-led shows. No. And I like, my thing is factual entertainment. So it's not, I'm not a performer like a Dale is, you mm. know, or Scylla or whatever. I'm not a kind of a funny person who goes on and tells a few jokes and does all that kind of thing. But I like doing fact, well, you know, we just sort of mix in with facts and stuff. And um, those programmes aren't being made at the moment. So I'm kind of... Yeah, I'm just very happy doing what I'm doing. I've said on air before, and I don't know whether you agree, there seems to be a showbiz shortage at the moment. We've oh. lost Barrymore, we've lost Scylla. Yeah. There's Davina McCall, who's failing at the moment, sadly. Graham Norton's gone to the BBC, so Channel 4 have got nobody. I mean, yeah. there doesn't seem to be any big personality. Through. Ant and Deck are huge, yeah. and they're lovely lads, and they're, they are funny. And they, you know, they've... But they've been together 
uh, 15 years or, mm. so, or more. Well, they started in Biker Grove, didn't they? And Biker then, Grove. So they've and then grown up together. done all sorts of different things. So they they might be new to, to my mum, but they're mm. not new to the generation who were watching 15 uh, years ago. And uh, they're great. And Tarrant, obviously. But yes, I suppose you're right, really. There's a dearth, there is particularly a dearth of um, male presenters in their late 30s and 40s. There aren't many around. If you mm. think of these, I think how many there are. There's Eamon. Yeah. And he's getting all the work for everything now, isn't yeah. he? Yeah. There aren't many, though. No, are there really there? aren't. No. You're right. I mean, there's just very little around. I suppose that's good for you in one way because it means you could get more. But do you now just want to back off and you're happy just to talk to the likes of me and then do your I countdown am, and yeah. that's it? Yeah. You're easily pleased, aren't I you? I am. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take another piece of music and then we've got to talk countdown. I mean, this is a thing that I think you're most famous for. Yeah, um, yes. And it must have been shown around I'm the proud world. Of. of course. Mm. And why wouldn't you be? It is one of the most successful programmes in the world ever. It's certainly been on the longest. And of course, this year we lost Richard, yes. who. Um, in a, in a way was mocked by many but loved by all wasn't he yeah and he that's was. so rare that people kind of knew that he didn't take himself too seriously and that he could <laughs> laugh at himself so we were okay to laugh at him absolutely and because <laughs> as you know if you i mean obviously you've seen cat many times over the years but he um you know as we we had run, running jokes in between us, uh, you know, like Countdown was on 23 years, never won a single, can I swear at this? Yeah, time? go on. Bloody award. <laughs> and, uh, I'll do one worse. <laughs> there no, must be I a can't. bigger word than that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, never won a single thing. And we used to laugh and laugh. And we were always nominated for the National TV Awards, you know, mm. the big one at Albert Hall. And we'd turn up and we'd go, and we'd be sitting next to the bill between the bill and Brookside. And we'd go, oh, loser's corner again, you know, and all of this. And we'd, and we always found these things I don't know if it's a northern thing but really really funny but because you know we knew that we loved each other and when I say we I'm talking about the countdown team you know we were very strong together and so anything that was a sort of a down we turned into an up mm. between us and I think that's an it has a lovely spirit about it countdown and we know that we've been mocked and um I mean, just on kind of sketch shows and stuff, but it, we just love it because it's just countdown. And Richard always used to say, you know, if it was commissioned now, it would never get past the commissioning editor. But, you know, here's now here's a little game show. And we have these lino tiles, this <laughs> old bird in a mid 40s doles out, you know, then you have a clock and nothing happens for 30 seconds. <laughs> and then you have a host who's kind of getting on a little bit and tells his really, really very unfunny jokes. And then you have, oh, you do sums. And then you do some sums. And then then, and then you do another little bit of a word and that's it really and that's 45 minutes please <laughs> can we have a contract get lost they you see say, but if you said know. we've got 10 people who are quite thick who we're going to put in a house for four months oh, and do finish. nothing then yes. they'd say yes, it was, yes <laughs> then everything would be all right then everything would be all right the dilemma i have with this carol i'll be perfectly honest with you i don't know who can replace yeah. richard whiteley um I think there's only one person I said to you in the corridor. I think yeah. you were the one that I would have liked to have seen take the show and carry on because you are Countdown. You're Mrs. Countdown. He was Mr. Countdown. He was Mr. Countdown. Now, anybody who comes in, they're just going to look and think, oh, Rich is not there with his daft ties and silly jokes. No, but the... <laughs> I've thought and thought, as you can imagine, I have thought and thought and thought and thought about it. And I've also read hundreds of thousands of emails mm. and at first we were all shocked and said that kind of said that's it really um it can't go on and so on but then after a few weeks when the the sh we're still shocked but you think differently and you remember things then and our viewers who had written in originally and said something and wrote again three weeks later and said actually you know we think we miss it mm. and we miss him and we will always miss him and you know it, but it should go on because it's a tribute to him and if it didn't go on then somehow Rich's memory would be lost mm. far faster than if it carries on because and I know you believe me it will go on as a tribute to him and mm. with the greatest of respect and love for him. And if any programme's going to do that, it's Countdown. Mm. You know, um, Mr. Whiteley, old Dick, King Dick will never be forgotten. 
if we can help it. You can't so, remember that poem about Dick, can you, that he wrote? Uh, I, I saw it the other day. I should have brought Dick it in. Of, uh, oh, is it? There's Dick Turpin and there's Dick... Uh, that right, one, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. There's, oh, I can't remember. There's I should write it Dick out. There's only one that we look after. But, <laughs> yes, the one that we love. It, that's you, Richard. You're the greatest Dick of all. <laughs> that's that's right. Right. Oh, he loved that poem. How he loved it. I mean, it was just silly schoolboy humour, but the, the old <laughs> ladies loved it, the students loved it, and all those in between loved it. And I think the reason being is because, like yourself, it's just being real. You don't feel like you're watching a performer. You're just watching two guys who happen to be on the TV doing yeah. a quiz show. Yeah, that's right. And you do play... You can't just watch Can't Down. You have to play it, don't mm, you? Absolutely. And um, it's... It, you know, it's it's a lovely pace and it's and it's very gentle. And whoever, because the decision has not been made yet and will be made shortly, and there are a number of names. Will you be um, a big part in that decision? Yes, and um, it will have to be someone who loves the program. Of mm. that, there's no question. So, um, and if they love the program, then they will have respect for Richard and everything that he did. And you know, everyone who works on it, we're all we're all part of the Countdown family, and um, I, I think it's right that it carries on now. I, I have to think that the other way round, what happened if if I had uh, passed away, you know, an, an accident or something, what would have happened? And I think I, w I would have wanted it eventually to carry on. And it's been off air, it will have been off air for three months. And I think that's... Here's the question of the interview. Go on. Carol Vordman, <laughs> thank you so much for coming in today to Capital Gold.